All right, if we're trying to like figure out our approach to type, it's always good to sketch a few different versions. So that's one. This is another. And then you can keep refining it. So this was a version. And what I liked about this is it fit everything in and it fit the no in there. And I put a little decorative bullet. You can also add things to your type, right? You can add exclamation marks. You can add banners. You can add stars. You can add things that are underlined. You can add boxes behind, circles, buttons. It would all be part of the type solution. And then I think this, this reads pretty clearly. So now, once you have your approach, let me check the image size of this. I'm going to bring it up to 16 by 20. And it's not full resolution yet. And if I like this approach, let me close this one. I'm going to bring in my finished PNG from assignment 5. Two here. And then I'm going to hold down Option place it. It's good to remember that your type can go behind your image as well. Like I kind of like how the fools is not fully showing. It's being covered up a little bit. So now I have my approach. What do I do next? The next step is what's called the type setting. And this is when we actually find the, the type of letters that we want to use. So I'm going to save it. Should update in my assignment six folder. There we go. So now I have this text blocking sketch file as my PSD. Now, when we look at the assignment, it introduces this first with text blocking and then with the actual type setting. And what, for Stranger Things, when they did the type setting, which is a really nice example, they used a standard font. This is called ITC Binguat Standard Font. This is what it looks like. Because when type designers design type, typograph ty typographers, they not only design the vector shape of each letter form, they also design the space around each letter. That's called the kerning. And as my typography teacher told me, think of kerning like you have a glass of water and you drop the letter form into the water. The kerning is the amount of space that the water takes up in the glass, right? And this type teacher would say, when you take the type out of the glass, you want the water to always be at the same level. So what does that mean? That means for letters that take up very little space, like I, you want to have a lot less kerning, a lot less space around those letters. For letters that take up a lot of space, or no, I'm sorry, you want more kerning around the smaller letters. And for letters like G that take up a lot of space, you want a lot less kerning around them. The problem is when you design type, you have no idea how people are going to put letters together. So they just have a default spacing built in. One trick is the default spacing is always better when it's all capitals. So almost all kind of title design like what we're doing is designed with all capital letters. Second, when you see them in their default arrangement, pay attention to the, the spacing between the letter forms. So in particular here, you see how much space that G takes up. It's got almost no kerning around it. So to make it more pleasing, they had to squeeze that and even flatten the back of the G to reduce the space around it. And the, the one with actually extra kerning added is the I. That needed a little breathing room to feel more readable. So this is what's called typesetting. It isn't just picking the type of type, it's picking exactly the placement. So you'll see here, I say, 
that this new skill beyond kind of text blocking, and this is type setting, is to modify existing uh, type or text resources. And we're going to click on defont.com. This is like a Pixabay for typefaces, for typeface designers. And I can just scroll down, and these are the ones that were just added. But right now, this has 76,257 typefaces I could use. Now, clearly, they all have a very different style to them. This one's pretty interesting. So if I want to try it out, I click on it, and then I can put my text here. I'm going to use all caps, suffer no fools. And that's how it would look, right? That's the default spacing. And then I want to think about my text blocking. So I'm going to pull this into a new tab. And do I think that for this, this kind of type typeface makes sense? I don't think it makes sense for the E. I don't think that's very readable. I don't like how thin the U is there. Like, just basically, no, I want something blockier and heavier. So instead of just looking at what were the, the most recent fonts that have been added, right? and there were more added just in between the time I opened it. And some of them are really cool. We're going to be learning how to be making all these kind of modifications. What's a good basic one I can start with? Like, is it a retro one? Like this, or kind of blocky. I, I tend to like retro ones. This one's actually really cool. And I can just copy that so it's easy on future ones. And I can kind of see how that works. Is that pretty readable? It's pretty readable. This might be a contender. Put this off to one end. All right, so what do I do if I think I might want to use it? Because I'm going to be able to modify it as well. I'm going to be tracing all of this as a vector. So don't use anything too intricate because then you're just giving yourself a lot of work. But what I'm going to do is simply, very simply, make it all fit on the, on the page. So I'm going to use small in this instance. And then I can zoom in on it. And then I'm just going to do a screen grab. Command Shift 4 on a Mac. And I'm screen grabbing it. And that's going to be a PNG on my desktop. There it is. And then I'm going to bring that PNG into my photo P. And we're going to use all of, the, all of our compositing skills. So there it is. It's a smart object. How can I start making it match my text blocking sketch? This is the type design I'm going to try. Tech, the, the type setting is putting it within my text blocking. So first, I need to separate it out. So I take the suffer. And I say, Command-J, duplicate that. Now it's on its own. And then, Control-T. Hold down Shift to distort it. Rotate it. Stretch it. How can I warp it? Well, I can just click here where it says Warp. It's a shortcut. Or I can go to right-click within and go to Warp. But this allows me to push and pull, change the tilt, and I like kind of the hippie-ishness of this one a little bit more than if I used something that was super blocky. Like, for instance, 
evil empire. Right. And you can take a lot of time finding the right typeface and customizing it. But for right now, I'm just worried first about these first few letters. Like basically the first SUF, I can hit return and then I can duplicate it. And then I can worry about the back few letters. So I'm just going to cut that out. Delete it. I have it here. And now I can do command or control T, not command T. Yeah. And let's play with these letters now. And this is your type setting. It's called that because you used to, if you were a printer, you used to actually have to pick out the letter high type from these drawers and then modify it from there. Okay, so I'm taking my, my screen grab now and I'm trying to isolate out the different parts to modify. And I'm using control T. And this is where those beautiful compositing skills we worked so long to learn at the beginning of the semester really come into play. I can take my opacity down and I can see what some of these challenges are, right? Like I need to make room. Because at the top, my text blocking doesn't have it running behind my illustration, though on the bottom it does. Probably. It's not something I've played with. Because I'm an Android guy. All right, let's see. So what I want to do is control T and now I'm going to play with warp. And that gives me a fair amount of control of this F, that E, a little less control of that R, which is getting a little out of out of my uh, parameters. Oh, but there we go, I'm getting it back. Okay. So by doing this with screen grabs, it actually has a lot of advantages. For one, as we stretch, warp, distort, scale, rotate from screen grabs, it will actually also modify the space between the letters. You guys remember what that's called? It actually starts with a K, but it sounds like a C. It's, it's kerning. Yeah, so the kerning is the space between letters, and that matters. I'm going to set these to multiply. There we go. So it's nice to be able to modify that spacing and that kerning at the same time. Now, you can also use type tools within Photopea. And you just click on the T, it's a vector tool. And you click and it will create its own layer with a big T. And then you pick your typeface just like you would in a word processor. And actually, I really, really like and applaud Photopea for how they do this. They give you a lot of typefaces and they give you a preview of each one. And it's, it's almost like its own default. And some of them are pretty crazy, like this fancy pants one. So you might find one here. I'm gonna make its size a lot bigger so I can see it, right? And I might type it in. Suffer no fools. Or I just have suffer no at the top, right? Now, what's great about that is I have this typeface, but it is a smart object vector. So if I do control T and I stretch it, like hold down shift, right click, I can rotate it, but it won't let me do everything to it. It won't let me warp it. It won't let me do certain things. 
And so that's a limitation 